And welcome back once again to the PCS Spring Split 2022. I am still Pyra. He is still Nightstar. We're getting ready for round two here with Sem9 as they take to the stage to face off against Impunity. But before we do, I'd like to take a moment to thank our wonderful sponsors, CTBC Bank, and of course, Caliber, for helping to make the PCS possible. Now, Nightstar, Sem9 came off a rough loss, but as we discussed in the post game, this was much more likely the game they were spending their time preparing for and I would imagine Impunity giving it quite a lot of thought to because the teams are very close in the standings. Impunity just having gotten their first win yesterday against Meta Falcon team. And for Impunity, I feel like uh, they're a bit on the up and up. Uh, of course, it's just one win, but even in all those four losses, they look pretty strong. Um, so I've been inspired by a lot of their efforts, their drafts. Um, Yes, some of the execution has been, hasn't been has been quite clean, but again, a lot of these new players, it's going to take time to complete, uh, completely integrate everyone together. So uh, that's, uh, you know, a concern, but not a heavy concern early on. And for Impunity, the growth they've shown, I think outweighs a lot of the fumbles in game uh, as, they look to try and keep the streak going and make it two in a row. Yeah, no changes to the Sem9 roster who are looking to find their first win here, having to play back-to-back -back games this week to make up for the fact that they weren't able to take the stage last week around. Uh, really would hope to see some more from this team, but interestingly enough, we have a bit of a grudge match on our hands as Caspiel oh, yeah. was the player that got Impunity into the PCS in the first place and then was unceremoniously dumped. And I would imagine... This man is looking for revenge, but I do hope his performance is a little better than what we saw out of the Jarvan game. Otherwise, he's not likely to get it. Yeah, he... It was a bit of an uninspiring performance in game number one. Is He kind of just farmed until six. Yes, he had that really... Uh, he had nice two ganks in that mid lane, but that was it. Absolutely. You know, and uh, we're, we're still waiting to unlock Faith, apparently. We are, but that, you know, a new challenger will approach soon enough. But you know, okay. interestingly enough, for new challengers, Pinway is coming in two for two on his games now. And ever since the swap, there has been a little something special in the air there. I think on the Impunity Esports side, uh, certainly has given them at least the one win. I really liked what we saw out of Rakan as well, uh, supporting Blaze on that Jinx. I think the Yasuo comp was an interesting strategy. I'm I'm curious to see how this all works out. Uh, but we will be comparing our bottom laners today because Kleix, of course, coming into the league, has been unable to find those wins. Did have some good Jinx play in the previous game. But he's up against Blaze, who I would argue was the best part of Impunity last year mm -hmm. and certainly looks to be a very strong part of it this year. Uh, yeah. He has been certainly the big carry on this squad as, uh, contrary to Faith's name, I've been lacking faith in his gameplay, and really it's been more of the side lane focus for Impunity and Blaze really stepping up, as you can see in the damage numbers, almost 30%. That's uh, A lot of the heavy load in AD carry does get in um, this meta right now, but we are now headed into the draft phase. Uh, Sem9 really focusing on that jungle pool right off the bat. Taco, of course, having those yeah. really big Lee Sin games, and Diana also won those big team fight carries. Not to mention uh, Impunity also focusing a few bans. They are not going to allow the Zin Zathra, and of course, Red Side Zeri must ban at this point, so no surprises here. For Sem9, and we saw them, it could have been a glitch, but we saw them not banned last time around. Camille will be removed. Uh, that's been Champion Quiet's had some success on, but we've also seen him play the Trendemir quite well. So I wouldn't be too surprised if he gets his hands on that. And I would like to see Shiro do something different. 
in that case, but then again, quiet may not be Leong. Renekton banned away here for Impunity. We'll see what the first pick is. It is going to be the immediate Ooh. Gwen lock-in. Okay. Uh, when it comes to the remaining strong picks, I definitely would have put Gwen right at the top of the list. Of course, you can have the ability to flex in a couple of positions if you really want to. Um, but Impunity, kind of take a look at it. And yes, they've got a pick of a litter when it comes to the 80 carries, but the Trindomir also still left available. It looks like they want that pick locked in for themselves. And we'll see what they go ahead and pair this with. I'd imagine it's uh, their preferred AD carry. But if they do leave AD carry up still, it could be perhaps they want to um, go ahead and hide a pick like the Ziggs on R3. Well, it would be a Blaze champion. Has been in the past, has been even in this split. Taking a lot of time, but okay. at the last second, they will lock in the Jinx. I think it makes the most sense. We've seen Jinx prio by most teams in the mm -hmm. handshake. Uh, but I, I, I wouldn't, you know, I, I wouldn't, I would be surprised if Playx does anything but Aphelios. We have seen him play uh, the Jin into this, but Aphelios is just pretty strong. Um, so we'll Ooh, see if they, okay. they give it the prioritization. And that's a Hecarim for Caspiel. Ooh, I'm starting to see something interesting here on the Sem 9 draft. There's a, there's a lot of run at them. <laughs> and it does look like they just want to go straight back to the Orianna. I'm a little bit skeptical. Um, however, this is a combination, at least this time around, going to be less reliant on having both ultimates available, and it's going to be more focused on making mm -hmm. sure Lazar has his ult at the very least. Whereas Caspiel will be able to kind of uh, try and just charge in and initiate fights with that uh, charge on the Hecarim. And it will be that Nautilus locked in for Pinway. So, you know nothing too surprising coming out from the sport but i would have preferred the thresh personally as we head into the second phase it will be a filios taken away i'm you know i'm not too against that because in my opinion jinx just wins against the filios and unless filios just really pops off in the lane phase against jinx it's really hard to play the matchup out yeah, that is a good point, right? Like, even though it's been hand shook a lot, it does seem like the Jinx has just so much more pop up potential overall. Uh, this composition, I am curious to see if Sem9 are going to be going for something completely different because right now what we're seeing is the opportunity to get some chase down. Impunity is not nearly as mobile as Beyond Gaming were last time around, and we will see what the rest of the comp has to bear. Braum is going to be banned, so a lot of focus towards bot side, as that's, of course, all that's left or Sem9 to lock in, and what will be their final ban? So Impunity banning away the Braum uh, takes away some of that defensive capabilities for Sem9, at least if they want to go for a, one of those big hyper carry AD carries or bot lane champions. Uh, so safety stripped away there, uh, and Volibear. it will be at a Volibear taken away, so taking away some of that dive pressure. Uh, that was definitely one of the big problems they had in the previous game in that it was just beyond gaming tearing them apart from every which way you could imagine so much dive pressure in some of these fights and the hover coming in on to the zaya is very interesting but we do know zaya does have protection for herself using the alt to kind of give self peel and they go ahead and lock in the recon here as well so um they have decent tools to deal with the dive pressure this time around if you do Ooh. over index into charging in as impunity as we get to see the zed locked in zed is going into the hands of taco so breaking this down um uh, we've seen this in the lcs so yeah. pride soccer plays it um uh, quite often uh it really loves the pick my uh, when it comes to this particular matchup when it comes to the junglers um hecarim doesn't pressure the zed nearly enough to say okay i can't play the game as zed in this 1v1 so that's why you're allowed to go ahead and lock this in and now you just have so much dive pressure is it possible to stay alive as sm9 because we saw they had a <laughs> lot of issues dealing with it in game number one but at the very least desire will have a tool 
to keep yourself alive. But is it enough? That is the question, right? Because they lock in the lovers duo. It gives them a little bit of extra range to work with on that. And that could help them in the laning phase. But again, you're, you're up against the Jinx Nautilus. There's so much kill threat there. And then, of course, double assassins and a Trindamir in the rest of it. I mean, this is a composition that does just ungodly amounts of damage. The Zed jungle coming in. You talked about it being a Pride Stalker special. Let me tell you about something. Pride Stalker is an old Kha'Zix player. So that tells you everything you need to know. I'm excited if Taco can bring that same level of aggression. And like, you know, we talk about like how protected you can be with certain things. Gwen is only immune if you are outside the mist. Hecarim can only not die as long as he keeps everyone feared in a way. Those have timers on them for sure. Uh, Sem9 have a hard comp to play into. I do like the ball delivery systems here and I like the front line better. I like the Gwen. I just wonder if it's gonna be enough. Yeah, and I would say compositionally, Sem9 have a better team fight composition. The issue is we saw in game one, they really struggled to deal with those flanks. And that will be really the key to this game. Can Impunity consistently find flanks or just gain advantages in these side lanes and snowball? Or will Sem9 get enough gold to get this Gwen and Hecarim ahead? Because I think these two champions will be key to their success. Absolutely. Let's take a look at our starting runes here, of course. On the side of Sem9 as well. Some phase rushes coming in. The Aerie on the Zaya. You know, Zyrakon, classic combination, but we haven't seen a whole ton of it. I was kind of expecting a Sivir to come in, like we saw earlier in the North American League today in LCS. That was uh, a composition that did work out uh, with a very strong Hecarim pick, but this is a little bit different. We'll see if Klaix and Philia can survive this bottom side, because Blaze and Binway have looked good in their uh, combination so far. Mm -hmm. Blaze, of course, the highlight member of last year's roster the only person to come and make a return although you know they still have Krellix in as the support now a sub as pinway has stepped forward to take the starting role and it looks like we're gonna have bot side starts here for both sides wanting to finish up top lane uh, to be expected of course um, for a trindamir as you do want to Again, make sure he gets level 6, but at the same time, Shiromine on this Gwen pick, it's going to be a really much better uh, chance for him to pop off than when he had that Graves in the previous game. Yeah, for sure. Alright, starting off getting a little poke onto Pinway down bottom side, he can shrug that off pretty easily as the Nautilus. Uh, and because they leashed, of course, you know, not able to get to the farm quite as fast. And now the question is, how safely can they get it back with that rocket poke? It's a bit of a double-edged sword with Jinx, right? Like, you can rocket poke all day, but then if you run out of mana, you could be in trouble. So it is always a careful dance. Blaze certainly knows how to handle this champion. And in the stop side, uh, just a little bit of trades. We'll see how well Shiro does in this... Um, a bit of a rematch against the Trindamir, of course, different uh, player piloting the champion, but he did struggle mightily in that first game as the Graves, and this no is kidding. a much different matchup. Um, better chance for Gwen to uh, make plays, but more importantly, has a lot more impact when it comes to team fights. Speaking of repeat matchups, too, I'll talk about that in a moment. Okay, never mind, that's it. Uh, obviously, Lazar playing passed. the same matchup against against another Ari, but also by the same token, Faith, a very different player than Minji. Yeah, very much so. We'll see how well he performs as, I mean, already Lazar having a better time because he's not getting bullied out from the wave. In fact, he has a bit of a CS lead. Uh, seven, you know, six CS, that's a full wave. Of course, the wave is crashing into Faith, but Lazar... Uh, much different story than game number one where he was just struggling mightily this time around he oh, actually he doesn't go ahead and go for the recall i thought he would just go ahead cheater and recall come back with uh boots and refill all of his potions to continue laning but that won't be the case here as he's going to hold on and 
Legends, Taco, Taco making an early visit. Yeah, level four, you don't expect the Hecarim to try and match pressure, and they are falling for it. Hook, line, and sinker, but a couple of oh. flashes, and they are out to try and turn it right onto Pinway again. I don't know if Philia wants to go any farther than that. They are going to bring Caspiel for defense. Uh, had to burn a summoner for that, and both supports did, in fact. I, I'd say that's, well, support and an AD carry. That's definitely going to favor impunity just a little bit. Mm hmm. I really like the trade coming in. And. Seeing in this top lane, like, Cheryl yeah. Lane could, with this ghost, force the exchange of summoners, really, because he did go for the recall. He did come back with um, a lot more stats, of course, getting that uh, additional item along with. Um, the refillable, he has a lot of stats to play around with here. I would have liked for him to be a lot more uh, in your face against Quiet. Because, again, the Trindomir doesn't have the teleport. So can't have those same sort of recalls. Really has to play off of wave position uh, in that matchup. Yeah, a bit of a roam here. That was actually just warding coverage. You can see Sem9 trying to go a little bit deep and head off any gank attempts from Taco. Still in level 5, though. No death mark available just yet. Felia waiting in the wings to try and bait a gank out of faith, but it's also not the easiest thing to do. It does seem like Sim 9 are, are a little antsy to make something happen. Obviously, once Caspiel hits 6, that's the go button. But uh, we'll have to see. Actually, that word down on the Krug camp does mean that Shiro has perfect information of the jungle position. Quiet could be happen in trouble. Before six. I don't think you'd expect this. They've also brought Philly to the party. And let's see if he burns those summoners. No, he does not. Exhaust on for an easy first blood. Doesn't get more clinical than that. Yeah, very, very easy first blood there. So a great start for Sem9 this time around. And more importantly, you just dumped an entire two waves to that tower. That quiet will miss out. However, Clayx... Oh. Uh, a little bit of poke, no follow yeah. through. Yeah, I mean, again, Zaya is a fairly slippery champion, but I, I feel like picking this is kind of just saying, look, we're not going to win this lane. We're going to be trying to go for those fights, and we're going to have a lot more impact consistently if we don't have the same level of pop off. Pop off, excuse me. Yeah, and interestingly enough, of course, we do see the airy, which uh, means that you are going to go for the lethality build as we see the Dirk in the inventory at the moment. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's going to be the decision coming in from Clay X. And uh, also have to bring to attention that there were three players that went cookies and biscuits for their rune choices and have yet to use any of them. So that's yeah. a lot of gold. Um, or Same thing, uh, by the way, so Nightstar. It, cookies and biscuits. It just depends on what side of the Atlantic you're on. That is true. And, As someone I mean, who's lived on both. <laughs> the the big thing with this rune choice is if you don't use them in lane in the early phases of the lane phase, they fall out of relevancy very, very quickly. And you're much better off taking a futures market, which scales incredibly well in this instance. But now it's going to be a play made towards yeah. the red buff. It does look like Caspio will go ahead and concede it and trying to help out his bot lane by hanging around Ooh. he could get caught though that's the charm but he's got onslaught of shadows and he needs to use it defensively to try and get out of the death mark is on and taco is going to claim his life filia will fall and clay x oh. is down with no help coming here as he goes for the oh, feather boy. storm however he has pushed impunity off still two kills unanswered and he, doesn't he is have flash, a though. sitting duck no flash Yep. Oh, Sitting Duck, he's going to go quack. Can he hit level 6 on oh, this? Yes, he nope. does, but... Feed it right into Blaze. Oh, that's going to be plates, too. Oh, Impunity, that was a beautiful setup. And, and Caspiel, he knew that was coming. He knew it was coming. Uh, looks like he didn't expect Faith, though. And, um... Yeah, uh, I guess he wasn't expecting the burst damage coming in, but you are up against essentially two uh, double assassins, so... <laughs> I'm yeah. personally not very surprised yeah, by I the damage. I feel like you but... should expect it. Um, yeah. And Clay it... knows he's dead. He's just trying to get a return mm -hmm. kill here. He almost has an opportunity to try and trade one for one because he hits level six but unfortunately he isn't able to skill up his ultimate in time uh, as yeah you see it right there he only gets a fraction of a second to try and skill up and use the ability right away 
and unfortunately unable to do so. Uh, if he was Kennedy. able to, maybe he trades one for one, but at the same time, maybe he doesn't and he just loses a key cooldown where now he'll just get dove again. Yeah, also look at where the kills landed right there. I mean, at the moment, Impunity have three and, and one of them each on... All the big damage threats, obviously quiet on this Trindomir. I mean, he can get his own kills, it's fine. Mm -hmm. But, like, Taco's got one on the Zed that he earned down there. Faith had one from earlier, and Blaze picked up that other one that was spoon-fed. This is exactly what you want on the Impunity side. And they're gonna do it again! Can you believe it? Oh, dear. No summoners still on the bottom side. They're actually going to try and, for a second, sack Philia, but he was able to battle mm -hmm. dance back. Nicely done. That's why you want the Lover's Duo, because you get that extended range. That's... Really nice execution coming in from that bot lane of Sem9. Uh, so, you know, Clay X holds on to that ultimate and pays off in that particular instance. And he still has flash available for that next gank, which is going to be a lot better results than before. In this top lane, Shiro Mine also having a much better result in the lane phase than before is... Uh, instead of a deficit, he is in the lead when it comes to CS. Of course, um, once Quiet does get that first item completed, he will have the 1v1 advantage. But for now, um, short trades do favor Shiromine. It really just comes down to this all in. Uh oh, Ghost is already on. He wants to get the kill. Unfortunately, there's plenty of time to buy. And with Taco there, Quiet will get the kill. Oh, no, man. Give this man an Oscar. He baited it well. Did very, very well in that instance and uh, nets himself a kill. Fortunately for Shiro, we'll have Teleport and Caspia will also be able to eat up the CS. So as it stands, 10 minutes into the game, we haven't had any focus onto the Dragon, or not big focus onto the Dragon. I and mean, we have seen the first one gone, go down, but it's not at like the six minute mark, which we've had no which I would say is kind of where you want to see that dragon come down when right. it comes to a lot of these dragon-focused teams. And uh, we'll see where Caspiel decides to toss down this Rift Herb. I think that's the big next big play to focus on. Yeah, absolutely. The team's kind of shaking hands just a little bit on the objective, but it, it feels like they want to set up uh, a play somewhere on the map before they drop it so they can get the full charge. They are yep. running a little bit low on time to try and pick the plates up, but it seems like top side is the way to go. There's still a flash on Quiet. He will seed this one as the wave crashes. And I think they might just go ahead and open up Shelly. They're actually bringing Lazar here to the party to try and convince him. No, they're just going to go ahead and go for the attack. It's going to be a dive, if anything, but Quiet, he's got to know something's up. I think they just want to take away two plates right here and then go ahead and start it up. It's a feather storm. Rift. Oh, it's meanwhile, the flash. Oh, what a place! Good dodge! Can he get this 1v2? Clay oh, he almost does 1v3 even. Oh, it's just not fair. Lazar will get revenge at least on one. But oh man, if you're Clay X, it's just so close. Oh, that was pretty flashy though. And now uh, they, of course, do get the execute onto that first tower and get a charge onto the second tower up top side. A really nice play coming in from Semni to at least be able to trade pretty effectively for the side of Impunity. That dive attempt, of course, really uh, kind of forced their hand because of the fact that they saw the jungler up top side with that Rift Herald and they, they felt compelled to try and make a trade immediately. And Clay X just plays it very, very well. Waits for the ult to come out from Nautilus, uses the ult himself to counter, and when he goes for the feather rip, flashes right onto Blaze to make sure he gets the CC. Unfortunately, because the tower is focusing on Pinway, the tower isn't there to help him out finish, finishing that kill onto Blaze. It does force Blaze to use both of his summoners just to get away, though, after the heal and the flash into the bush. So I feel like if you're Clay X, like, sure, it sucks not to get the kill, but. That's not so bad. You can come back and do it again. Gold game actually just about even, by the way, with all things said and done. Mm -hmm. First tower, of course, and the inner turret being charged down by a second Shelly. Uh, that's pretty nice there for Sem9. This is already looking like a lot better game. Of course, at this point, the game kind of felt like it was getting close to over last time around. Uh, but Sem9 have definitely come alive in this one. I want to see what else they can do. Dragon may be contested here. It is a Hextech Drake. And Sem9 are muscling in, but will they be able to get there in time? I think Taco can just, yep, finish the job. Yep. A little slow to react. 
and Taco has gone for the Stradbreaker, which is a item that has been coming back in popularity. Gives you a little bit of the extra burst damage and really locks a target down as well. Makes it hard for them to escape. And I mean, when it comes to these win conditions, right? Uh, for some nine, it was about really the top in jungler. And with the Gwen and the Hecarim, they've been, well, the Gwen's been doing relatively well. And the Hecarim's been there. Uh, he, he hasn't necessarily been popping off per se, but uh, it does feel like when it comes to styles, Caspiel, it feels like he's more there to support the lanes rather than force plays. And perhaps with Lazar's tendency to kind of just sit back, maybe that's why Sem9 went for this jungle change rather than have Arashi constantly looking for these invades, constantly looking to flip. And uh, it feels like his mid laner wasn't quite always there to support these kinds of plays. Yeah, sometimes if you have a stylistic clash, you've got to make a change, even if on the surface it looks like one jungler is playing a little bit better than the other. Uh, Caspiel definitely playing a more supporting role on the Sekarim. I feel like if you can get a good counter engage, the Onslaught of Shadows can be massive as to try and, like, you know, dissuade the likes of Taku or Faith from coming in, or maybe even Quiet. And of course, an uncontested Herald. However, they do end up trading for the finishing out of the tower. And they're massing around the mid lane. And they're just going to go ahead and instantly drop this. But I don't know if this is going to be enough to finish Tower of Blaze here. He might have to back off. Actually, Caspiel winning the wings. Pinway is there the too. Danger they're to collapse collapsing. now. We've got the teleport they're coming everywhere. through. Shelly will get the charge. Here comes the big rocket and Faith over the wall. And this could be huge right now. Health bars are starting to melt. And Quiet will open up the casualties. Oh, look at you, down Philia. And then Caspiel. Clayx falls as well. And it's absolute disaster as Shiro tries to get something back. He grabs Blaze, but it is just not going to be enough. Lazar will fall oh. to Quiet too. And it is almost a wipe. Shiro shows up to show late, and unfortunately, some nine they fall victim to that multi-directional flank once more. Impunity coming in from all directions. This is what happens when you push up a little bit too excessively and don't wipe out the wards. There was just a lane ward right there, right behind them, and that you means the cavalry that. arrives. And look, they're surrounded from all sides. Clayx. He has to use the ultimate early on in the fight, which is not good for his chances of surviving. And you really need the, the Gwen to show up sooner rather than later when it comes to these fight setups. Because you know your backline isn't going to survive very long against this dive. And you need the extra pressure coming in from Ekram and Gwen to put threat onto their backline. So at the very least, you're able to exchange backlines. But that wasn't the case here. And so Ooh, by the time he's damage. able, like, he still assassinated the Gwen or uh, the Jinx, right? The Jinx only did 1200 damage, but still 500 more than the Zaya. And as he brought attention to, like, Faith did a lot of work in that fight, dancing around, diving into the back line. And because, well, Zaya, yes, she's safe. But she only dodges the first. She only dodges the first engage. If yeah. you have follow up engage, well, sucks to be you. Yeah, he had flash, but uh, you know, not really much of an opportunity to use it there. Faith gonna be uh, able to push down this top side. Lazar, man, how many times have we seen this poor man collapse on? He is gonna use his shockwave, but he's always forced onto one target because of how slippery these two assassins are. Taco claims another on the death mark. Yeah. I know during the pre-show, or at least during rehearsal, we were kind of talking about, hey, uh, Oriana, pretty good right now. Eh, it depends uh, on the player, I guess. Quiet, uh, well, he's out. Um, it's, you know, every time I see a Trindamir getting low, I'm just like, you know, I shouldn't really get excited. And then the Trindamir dies, and I'm like, oh, I should have gotten excited. <laughs> um, you right now? to press R, darn it. Yeah. I, sometimes you do. Sometimes it's a, such a simple thing. But you know, you can forget these things. He did. And we got a win from some knight. They steal away the blue buff at no cost. Now they can collapse on mid. Blaze! Oh, Blaze just dodges out of the onslaught of shadows. Will he be able to collapse on him instead? They're looking for... Oh, they do not actually have the ultimate 
from Oriana. Oh. Lazard doesn't have the cooldown. That could have made all the difference. As the rocket does come back just to dissuade them, they're pushed away without getting the kill. But they do burn everything from Blaze. Yeah, and now they still have the shockwave for this dragon fight. That's going to be really important. Lazar, he has to hit a multi-man shockwave in this fight. Otherwise, it could just be game over. And Impunity know it right now. They are going to back away Faith with the collapse on the, on the dragon. They may actually see this one, but here comes Faith around Quiet's the side and quiet as well. Shiramine trying to cut them off, and this is going to be close right now. The health bar is really already talking low. They're going to back off from this one. They have seen this film before, but unfortunately for them, it does mean Impunity get the cloud dragon. And there's just no coverage on the sides. The, this time around, at the very least, they have a minion wave coming in from mid, so they do see where Quiet is coming from, but they don't have vision on where Faith is. And it just, it's just really f difficult to play these fights out if you are that backline. Oh, now, dear. Hero. Well, immune? Not, not anymore. Immune enough. Yeah, uh, you can't be immune to three people diving on you, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, even Gwen's not that good, but it will stop the tower from being taken. Mm -hmm. Oy vey, though, Nightstar. This is getting out of hand. 20 minutes impunity open up quite a lead here of about 4,500. Faith will try to make that more on this mid-tier one. Mm -hmm. And as Baron has hit the rift, I don't think it's a take, but there is a lot of damage on this impunity side. They can certainly threaten sooner rather than later. Yeah, they certainly have a lot of damage, right? You have Trindamir, you have Zed, you have uh, the Jinx as well. The only issue is you don't necessarily have a great tank. So if Sem9 do show up in a timely fashion, especially at 20 minutes, you're going to take a lot of damage from that Baron. And that might be what Sem9 need in order to find that Hail Mary team fight to get back into the game. So I think Impunity will kind of um, play a little bit safe here. And for Sem9, they're really hoping that Impunity do go for one of these uh, Baron plays prematurely because, again, you still have this Orion Shockwave, you have the Wombo coming in from Shockwave, and Hecarim and Gwen. Uh, especially when you're trapped in the back of the pit like that, Gwen can find a lot of value. But once more, we do see a very safe build coming in from... Uh, Lazar going for the cooldown boots along with the uh, Ludwin's Echo. I feel like you should just synchronize your two items. Either you go Sork Boots and uh, Sork Boots and Ludens, or you go cooldown and. Oh boy. Uh, okay, that's. Uh... Seen that one before. They, they set that up for so long, uh, but... Yeah, man, Shiro... This is the problem. Shiro can't sign lane safely because Gwen is only immune as long as people are trying to hit her from far away. Yep. They have plenty of people that can just kind of dip in and out of her mist, which means that they are able to deal damage to her, and now Impunity pushing down in this bottom side, which means some 9 they're forced to go for a recall here. Mm -hmm. And this is um, a little bit of a rough spot because yeah. they do need to allocate someone to take care of this bottom wave constantly. But if they, you know, leave it, uh, leave just one member and they get kind of double dove by. Okay, they're, they're, they're gonna die. going for the engage. Okay, they, they do find Blaze. Blaze here. This is massive right now. Can I believe they, they can delete him with the exhaust. Yes, they can. One hit would Ooh. do it. They manage okay, it. A lot of Meanwhile, the Shepard pulls back in Faith here. They're going to open up the Feather Shot. That's here. have to do it. That's two massive kills. But Quiet is going to try and get revenge. Rooted down forever. But he flashes and dashes and spins the sword. Sem9 trying to hang on. But Pinway oh, is trying to get some extra kills. It was a knockdown drag out fight, Nightstar. And as the dust settles, it's three for three. Holy moly. It's actually three for two because there's three remaining from the side of Sem9. That's Excuse a me. massive win as they finally oh. find a team fight for themselves. And, they and they're going to get tower. Find Taco as well. If they're. Uh, I don't. They got this. They okay. got this. They got All the right. objective Just value. This, is, this that, is big. Yeah, that that is big. But Felia is the one to cash in on the bounty, unfortunately, as we get to see the replay. And this is um, what makes it fun as an AD carry play sometimes. Oh yeah. Uh, when they just run at you, you only have one dash. It's not like you're running Flash Ghost yourself. 
And this time, because Quiet's not there at the start of this fight, it makes it a lot easier for the backline to play. And um, so, credit goes to Sam Nice, still searching for plays and being able to get the pick. Absolutely. 71 that damage. Was, Woo! That was, That's a yeah. lot. Yeah, Water I burner. mean, Blaze spent most of, the, spent most of that, that fight running away. And unfortunately, uh, when Hecarim wants to chase you, you're not getting away. Uh, you gotta flash a wall and hope the rest of your team covers. But um, that was a great, honestly, that was a great setup, a great mm -hmm. execution. And I think the only reason it wasn't a more, a, a, a more, like, dominating fight. Overwhelming, yeah, dominating fight yeah. was because Quiet comes in and cleans up and because He's you can't really stop him. I mean, Clanks did everything he soul. needed to, but it's Trindamir. And now this, this is going to be Soul. They, they have to, to make the play here. It's already down to half health. They actually have managed to catch Pinaway, but that's a lot expended just on the support. Clanks does take him down. Do they have enough? They Pass need to get the that smite off fight. in the time. They oh, do no. not get it. That Soul going over and Quiet is running amok here, but he's going to run out of ultimate soon enough. There it goes. Never mind. Taco you is going to get shut down. Seven that's nine. huge they for Clanks right now. They can take the fight. Shooting and cutting him down to size. Massive ah! win here for Sep9! Shiro lives! Gwen is immune! And also heals so damn much! Conqueror along with Riftmaker! In fact, going for the Randuin's Omen, getting that extra defensive stats, bailing her out in that instance. Quiet wants to take this tower, but unfortunately unable to. And Unfortunately for Sem9 as well, they aren't able to turn onto the Baron because of the low health bar onto the Hecarim, but we get to see it a replay. Quiet starts out the Baron, and Faith this time around not able to get on the flank fast enough as Sem9, they immediately turn for the fight. This is what we needed. Don't take things too slow. Allow those flanks to develop. Instead, just go straight in right away. Unfortunately, they don't get the soul, which is so important because of the extra move speed garnered over to impunity that will help him out quite a bit later later but blaze being stuck in the back of the pit uh, is every 80 carries nightmare against gwen yeah and look at the gwen damage starting to come out here this is where sem9 are coming into their power they do lose out on soul and they don't get the baron but they prove they can win a fight and Really, they just had the jump on Impunity for the second time now. You called it. Faith just was not there in time to make a difference. Pinway might have been tanky, but they shredded through him. And then just a great job of stiff-arming <laughs> Taco and Quiet away from Clayax, who was playing out of his mind this game. This yeah. is a very different Sem9, and I, I think they really did do their homework when it came to facing off against Impunity. Yeah, and I mean, Clayax... He's two, four, and three. So the stat line is not pretty. But when you get to watch the game and the fact that this is a very hard composition to play into, man, he's really putting on the moves as hard as he can to make things possible for Sem9 to play these team fights. Kirumine, if he goes a little bit too far, could get yeah. dogged down here. Has We've face chasing as well. Yeah, this time, though, he knows what's up. I don't know if he's going to live through this one. Very, very he tanky. Enough. He build. heals a lot. So much heal. I mean, and Quiet, is he's going to delete him at the second. Yeah, th there's really nothing you can do about this Trindamir. He's hes just, he's like an 80s horror slasher, right? He just keeps chasing you down until he kills you. Uh, but let's see if Sem9 can make a play here as they're both back in the brush oh, waiting yeah. to teleport. It's actually going to channel back onto base because the push oh, didn't stop. No. Oh, dear. Oh, Things no. have gone a little sideways as Caspiel gets deleted. The teleport comes back up. This has got to be a Baron play here for Impunity. Yeah, that's going to be a free Baron, in fact, because they did lose their jungler. And, of course, they lost their big carry in Shiromine. Uh They're going to try and make Pinway at least pay for this one or at least peel them oh, off. There's... No, that's going to be the knockup. They have some damage Aww. here. They're trying to threaten, and there's no more threat on their own base, but man, you're not going to outsmite Taco on this one. Maybe they can take the fight. Big Shockwave! He wins! Shockwave isn't going to happen, and they're going to go for the Featherstorm pullback, but it's just not enough. A desperation play ends in disaster for Sem9, as Impunity cleanly pick up the Baron, and cleanly pick up four kills, or three, I should say, as Caspiel still hadn't come off cooldown. Sem9, they try and essentially go for the Hail Mary in that instance. Make sure they stop the Baron, but unfortunately, Baron still goes down and they all die. So it's really gone from bad to worse. Now, Quiet has a Baron buff to play around with. So this game has pretty much come to a close. It was pretty 
well contested, I would say, coming in from 7-9. They show signs of life at the very least, but now against this Baron buff, it's so difficult to imagine them being able to find those fights because now these waves will just constantly be pushed in. If they want to try and force a fight, if Impunity are able to disengage, they can just continue to play these map movements. Now here was the play once again. You saw the idea was to bring Lazar in, go for the Hail Mary Shockwave, see what you can do. But it's a risky proposition, right? Because you've only got Philia and Clayx to do it. Philia tries to go in, he gets stopped for ages, and he just gets blown up before he gets the chance. Shiramine, uh, he's up a little bit too late to do much about it, and the Baron. Yeah. That's, uh, probably the dagger right there, Pyra. Yeah, ironically, he kind of bought a dagger after that. Um, yeah, I, I, I agree. I mean, this this feels a little bit rough. I mean, Sem9 were able to contest for a long time. Impunity, they have played this out pretty smart. A couple of mistakes in the team fights, and really just not anticipating the speed of the engage that Sem9 had brought out. But overall, just looking like the better squad on the day. And even though Blaze has been uh, shut out of a number of these fights... The issue is Taco, Faith, and Quiet have not, and they do a lot of damage to single targets. Meanwhile, Quiet just he just doesn't care about this M19. He's he's perfectly fine to just keep running back in. Shockwave or not, doesn't matter. He's got Undying Rage, and unfortunately for Sem9, they are not undying at all. Gwen might be immune, but I don't know how long that Nexus is gonna last, as this is going a lot all of damage. over the place. That's going to be the onslaught of shadows. Don't know if it matters here. Clayx is going to try and outplay Quiet. Nothing doing. Caspiel is going to get deleted by his former team. And 30 minutes on the clock is all it took. Impunity will crack open the base and claim their second victory on the split. Well played from uh, Impunity from the side of Sem9. Signs of life. Not the worst result, but we do have to examine this draft once more. And I, I don't think that... Lazar on this Oriana, early picking the Oriana, showing that he really wants this champion, whether or not it's for the Wamu potential or he just doesn't feel comfortable on anything else. Uh, well, that kind of remains to be seen, but for sure, in a lot of these setups, like we talked, uh, or I talked about to you how Oriana right now is in a pretty good spot against the low range compositions, but against some of these compositions that have high mobility, that's where the trouble comes in. And when you early pick it, it allows the other team to say, we just won't play into your game. We'll play ours. And they completely warp the game with their second phase picks. Yeah, it, it definitely seemed like there were more chances, more opportunities for Sim 9 to play the style that they wanted to. The issue is then the assassins started getting out of control. Then Quiet became mm -hmm. big side lane Trindamir. And, you know, all of a sudden it doesn't matter if you have a shockwave anymore because, sure, you can get one, which is what he did a lot of the time. But then there's a couple more. They just keep popping up and you're playing whack-a-mole the whole time. So... Impunity, I think, had more trouble dealing with the Sem9 squad, and there are signs of life there, despite the fact that they are 0-6 over the first two weeks. But I do think that Impunity just had the better strategy overall, and they gave themselves a lot of weapons, right? I mean, you usually look at a Jinx in this meta and say, okay, that's the prio target, we've got to shut her down. And fair dues, you managed to do that to Blaze quite a lot, but everybody else stepped up in the clutch. Taco and Faith were comboing up and it was it was like the jump scare game against Shiramine. They just kept popping out of the bushes right into his face and it didn't matter that he had the Hall of Mist. And at the same time, yeah, Quiet was just stacking it up. I mean, I, I think Impunity knew exactly what they needed to do with this composition. It wasn't as clean as the Beyond game, but it certainly looked good when it was firing. And Trindamir making yet another roaring appearance in game number two. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think we might see back to back Trindamir MVPs here because this pick is just so oppressive once you get ahead once you get going even like you don't even need to be that far ahead you just have to be even get level six without taking a death and all of a sudden you just kind of run away with the game very very easily and more importantly like don't build hellbreaker on this guy you, you don't need it you do a ton of damage and the resistances don't mean anything when you're already 
invulnerable at one HP. Yeah, I, I I feel like they knew exactly what they needed to do here on Quiet, and there just was never any pressure up top side, right? I mean, they they, they went for a, a dive once or twice. He did die one time, knew that was coming. And the second time, he was able to fend it off. It, it was um, it's the landing phase didn't end up mattering all that much, right? Because Quiet knew he would eventually get to this point. And also, like, sure, Shiramina had a much better time in lane and a much better time even out. But he ended up, you know, going this tank Gwen build, which meant he wasn't going to contest in damage. He wasn't going to burst the Trindomir down. Um, still was able to heal through things. But his job that game was kind of frontlining in these team fights that more often than not, Impunity just didn't give to the side of Sem9. And as a result, I think Sem9, they're still searching not just for a win, but I, I think searching for what they really want to do on this squad. And I am a little worried about Lazar's tendency to show that Orianna early. I'm, I'm starting to wonder if there might be champ pool issues in the mid lane. Yeah, that, that's a major concern there. Um, we need to see more out of him in general. I, I suppose I'm not completely sold on Caspiel coming into this roster as Arashi does give you a little bit more early pressure, perhaps gives you a little bit better chance in the early game. But some of those mid game chases were really good coming in from this Hecarim and mm -hmm. perhaps uh, the junglers have a difference in champ pools themselves that you want to be able to kind of flex between the two players. Yeah, I mean, I, I think overall it's it's definitely a much more active style when Arashi's in there, but I, I, I agree that maybe they wanted to try and play more passively or play more back and defensively because of Lazar's tendencies. But that creates another concern, right? Like if the issue is coming out of the mid lane and you don't have a sub in that position, then you could be in trouble. That being said, I think there is strength on the Sem9 roster. I think we saw it showcase. I think Clayx had a really good game on this Zaya. He was able to get out of situations that honestly he should not have been able to. Uh, he nearly outplayed Blaze, who I still think is probably the best player overall on this Impunity side. Although, you know, maybe maybe Quiet and, uh, and, and Faith are shutting me up a little bit with those damage numbers. Faith had a really good game on this Ari as well. Mm -hmm. Out of lane phase, he was just everywhere on the map. He never was under pressure, so he had an easy time of it. However, he showed that give him a assassin, let him get a few kills, he can certainly take off. Taco did the same thing on this Zed. Uh, some fun champions, some fun gameplay to see, and it worked out well this time. Really happy that we got to see Faith step up. That was the big question um, coming in from week number one as we We'll get to see Quiet take away the MVP, 27% of the team's damage. That's pretty high given the fact that uh, he is a top laner, but he is Trindomir. So, um, Everything's coming up Trindomir, baby. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll have to see how this trend goes moving forward through the rest of today, because right now teams just don't have an answer to this pick. And they just, they're not coordinated enough to deal with the side lane pressure. Yeah, I think that this is going to continue to be a powerful choice. I wonder if some teams just say, all right, you know what? Throw our hands up. We're going to ban this because we know this is going to be first picked on the opposite side. It may be the difference maker between, you know, the top and bottom half of the tables as things start to shake out a little bit here. Yeah, and the top and bottom half of the table is really starting to uh, kind of separate really the top five and the bottom five. But uh, impunity making the case for them to kind of enter that top half of the standings that of course you know not quite there as they will be in a tie i believe four fifth uh we'll go back and take a look at the standings later but um uh, good show you're gonna keep shifting for sure absolutely all right well we have got to go on break when we return though frank esports look to rock their opponents like a hurricane don't go anywhere 